check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. Well, hello there. Well, hello, Michael. Welcome to Highly Uncircumcised. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> not really to you but to, you know everybody else but you too oh, oh, oh okay all right welcome all right. welcome 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 so uh let's jump right on into this uh this thing we're talking about today both you and i uh decided to watch this uh documentary on um hbo called lfg um regarding the women's the u.s women's soccer team and and their journey to get equal pay and so forth and so on. So in a highly uncircumcised fashion, we've decided to tackle that topic and break it down and solve the world's problems and fix it right here today. Oh, we're, we're really good at this. We're, we're really good at solving the world's problems. Solving them. For all solving 60 of our viewers. You know that thing, world hunger? You're welcome. We fixed that. Gone. Peace in the Middle East. Done. Highly uncircumcised. Done. <laughs> Today we get women their money. <laughs> <laughs> so LFG stands for let's fucking go for people that don't know. We know this in poker because it's all like hashtag LFG. Uh, let's and, go. Um, so this documentary is on HBO and it's 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 pretty good. It's done well. I would say it's like anticlimactic because it doesn't really end with exactly what happened. I don't know if maybe they're still in process. I think maybe they are. They are. They are. Because I felt the same way you felt, which was like, wow, this is not like the uh, happy ending, uh, you know, all is right in the world. It was like, yeah, and the U.S. women still struggle to get their money. Roll credits. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it was. So sorry, spoiler alert, but it is good and it's worth it and it's valuable. And we're going to talk about that documentary today and we're actually going to spend the week. So we, we're, um, we're doing a topic for week now, right? So we're going to spend the week talking about disparity in pay with women and men, whether it's in sports or life. But today we're going to concentrate just on that documentary, which again, we do recommend. And we want to talk about some, I want to ask Mike, because I know a lot of our viewers are mostly men. Um, when you watched that, what were your first thoughts? First things that came to mind. Uh, so that's actually a pretty nuanced answer for me. Um, a, let me just say that I love soccer. I grew up playing soccer. It was my first sport, my first love as far as athletics goes. So I've always um, kept up with with women's and men's soccer uh, in the world and um, America specifically. Um, so I've kind of already known that there was that issue of, of equal pay. It wasn't like, you know, um, sort of a revelatory thing to me. But um, I will say the answer is um, US women's soccer is so much more interesting and entertaining to me than men's soccer. The, the women's game is so much better um they're so much more competitive on the on the world stage um so i felt for them i feel for them because they they deserve an actual flip-flop in in the pay meaning the men should be making what the women make right now and the women should be making what the men make right now uh in in soccer for sure yeah, i think that's super valuable i'm getting feedback again but um because in this specific sport in the US, it is one in which women are, the women's are much more popular than men's, right? Um, yet in this same instance, um, they are paid or they they were offered. So here was uh, one, again, we're gonna talk about this whole documentary. So if you don't wanna hear about it, go and watch it first and then come back. But um, one of their arguments, so they actually took the governing body who, pays him whoever it was right to court to to fight for equality in pay and their argument was that well we brought you this offer to the table and you took it right and that's true you know they're bad they don't have enough people advocating for them or they didn't realize or whatever um but also why do they bring to the table an amount that's so much less than the men's um, and like I and said, you said, we cause you can, because they could, and because why, could. what my question is, why, why can they, 
because sadly, I think that it probably has something to do with the value and expectation that the, the women probably put on themselves. Um, and I'm sure that can be so seen. So it's, it's a woman's fault that she's paid less. So the very short answer is yes, it's absolutely their fault because they aren't, A, they're not forced to play and they're certainly not forced to play for X amount of dollars. So the problem, um, and I think you and I actually had a conversation when we first watched a week ago or so. Um, the problem in my opinion is that they must've had seriously terrible representation because why in the world did they, it, from what I got from the documentary and they didn't speak on it too much, but it felt like whatever was proposed to them probably got eaten up quickly. Like, hey, we'll pay you $100,000 a year. And obviously I'm just throwing out numbers. We'll give you $100,000 a year, a year. And the women were like, give us 105. And they're like, okay, done. Then, you, then they found out that the men <laughs> were offered like half a million a year. And the men said, give us 650 a year. And they were like, done. And now the women, rightfully so are pissed off because they're so underpaid but i don't think that you can necessarily point the finger at the the governing body that 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 actually pays them which is the u.s soccer federation well and i i i don't think it's about pointing fingers it's about understanding the system and like just like you say it's 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 a woman's fault that she's paid less i don't necessarily disagree with you but also i think it's a system that's that's been allowed and also I guess to support that is that in court, in their court, so again, this is on the documentary, the, who is the body that they that they sued? Who who was it? They, they, I believe it's just called the U.S. Soccer Federation. Okay. Something, so, something to that. It's not FIFA. It's the U.S. Soccer Federation. Okay. So the, the body that they sued, so their defense attorney, they were going to run on their platform was going to be, well, you get paid less because you're worthless. Literally. I mean, that, that's that's, <laughs> that's that, obviously a horribly offensive and I'm sure inaccurate argument. Uh, well, of course, to. but the, the fact that they thought that that was okay to say, but also I want to say that when you say it's, it's woman's fault, it's almost saying that. I know you don't think that, but it's almost saying that this is the system that it's been and it's our fault because you know we've allowed it and but it's but this 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 example that we're using right now to me is not a systemic uh issue because there may be systemic issues that bring the u.s soccer federation to 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 propose the amount of money they propose sure in the same way that if you're white and I'm black and, and the employer offers me less money, not maybe because they even know they're consciously offering me less money, it could just be a subconscious thing. But my contention is, even though they've offered me less money, it's still upon, it's still on me to make sure that I get paid what I'm worth, mm -hmm. right? So if they offer you $100,000 and they offer me 90 and I know I'm worth 105, if I don't say, hey, give me 105, that's not their problem, even if they're a staunch racist. If they were at the Klan rally last night, burning uh, crosses and stuff, it's still not their problem. I have to decide for me, what am I worth? The US women, and I'm not even saying the women specifically, I personally feel, and I don't remember the lady's name, but whoever represented them in the negotiations for their contract is derelict, in my, in, in my opinion, because she's the one or he, whoever it was, is the one that probably persuaded this, the girls to say, hey, yeah, this is this is about the best we're gonna do and, and let's go for it. And then when you find out, you, you know, your, your male counterparts getting five times what you're getting paid and not only is he getting paid five times what you're getting paid, he sucks at his job. He is terrible at his job. You are literally three times better than he is at his job and you are getting paid four to five times less than he's getting paid, I'd be pissed off too. But I'd also be pissed off with me because I'm like, why did I take that? Well, I think I think that's true. I'm sure they are, right? But again, it comes back to the idea of there must be, and you say it's not systemic, but it has to be, if it is okay for the governing body to come to the men 
and automatically offer three times more, right? Especially for a men's team that's shite, right? This is the U.S. men's soccer team, right? It's they think, they truly think, and they and they use this as their defense that men are worth more than women if if that's how they bring their offer to them like oh here you guys are your trash team nobody watches you nobody cares but we're going to offer each of you an average of 100 grand to play but now we go to the women and our base offering for them is thirty thousand. like you have to think so, about like systemically that has to be in the back of their mind it has to be like it it just and then to say well yeah well the woman should have of course they should of course and now and that's what they're doing they're they're fighting for that disparity now especially because most of these women fighting probably already are making more than the men right these are these are actually very famous like rapino and all these like women who are actually probably making more than the men but they're fighting for all of them they're not they're not they're not megan rapino doesn't make anywhere near what anyone on the the men's soccer team makes but but let me tell you i wanted to before we move on i wanted to touch on the systemic uh scenario let me tell you why in my opinion this has nothing to do with any sort of systemic issue unless you're talking about the systemic issue of women just being valued less in society yes that's that's what i'm talking about oh okay because really what the real issue here is is everything is numbers driven right so with any business soccer or or wheaties i don't care breakfast cereal it doesn't matter everything is numbers driven and if the powers that be hire someone to do an analysis of how much they can get away with not paying someone or some entity they're going to do it right so the u.s soccer federation doesn't necessarily literally care that they're paying the women what they're paying them and they're paying the men what they're paying them. They're just going off of some some Excel spreadsheet that some super brain put together on how much they could pay the women's soccer team over X amount of years and how much they could pay the men's soccer team. And that's where that's that's what it comes down to. So if it was, if there, I guess what I'm saying is if there was some board meeting where all the people on the board in the US Soccer Federation got together and said, look, we can afford to pay the women a lot more, but hey, you know what? They're women and we don't want to. Yes, that is a systemic and completely reprehensible attitude. But I suspect that they're really just saying women tend to take this amount of money and they generate this amount of money and this is what's going to keep us profit- profitable. So offer their attorney this and their attorney, like a complete dope, just accepted it no real negotiation and so anyway that's that's where i sort of come from on well that. we don't know what their negotiations were but yeah i i agree i'm sure and you know every, everything is about money in in business right like we all want to make the most we can so the fact that you know they'll take the smallest amount possible is always you want to always want them to take as little as possible for sure so why I'll, i say it's systemic is how we get to this point where where right. we can, especially, I mean, this is why this, this documentary is so good because especially it's not only that women are doing the same job in this specific instance and in U S women's and men's soccer, but they are far surpassing far, like way better than the men. That, that is a perfect segue into actually what I wanted to just sort of okay. note for you right now, because mm-hmm. I think people need to hear these numbers. Cause when I saw these numbers, my jaw just dropped. Okay. So I'm just going to read these off as I have them, okay? So for each game won, men got bonuses of somewhere around $17,500 per, per game won. The women got $8,500, okay? So the women literally got half in terms of bonuses. For qualifying for the World Cup, the men got $2.5 million bonuses the women got 750,000. Now, I need you to know that women actually win the World Cup. Men may qualify and, and win like one round of the tournament. <laughs> the women actually win the whole thing typically, okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, the men's team got five and a half million dollars just for advancing to the World Cup. The women didn't make any money for going all the way to the semifinals the year that this was uh, compiled, this information was compiled. The men got five and a half million, the women got zero, okay? I'm not done yet. So for actually winning the World Cup, which the men have never done, okay, keep that in mind, 
for winning the World Cup, the men would get a $10 million spot bonus, okay? The women got $2.5 2 and they actually won it two times or three times in the last 20 years, okay? Men have not won it one time, okay? But if they did, they would have gotten about $30 million to the women's somewhere around $7 million. And then lastly, uh, prize money that actually comes from the Federation for the men uh, potentially winning is, wait, hold on, did I write that down right? The prize money from the Federation was about 30 million, okay, for the women and 400 million for the men over a 20 year period. So, okay, and I, and I think we probably will end it on that because we're gonna get into a broader discussion um, in, in our next two episodes. But I just want to, as we close it out, number one, really think about that disparity, right? And uh, in, in in an industry where, because we're going to talk about other industries where the women clearly don't perform as well as men, right? We're going to talk about basketball next time. But um, in an in industry where women outperform consistently the men, not just do the same job, but do it better. And are more entertaining, once again. More in entertaining. I mean, so in this case is why I question that it must be systemic and it must just be culturally how we've grown we truly believe a woman's worth is less than a man considering that their entire defense they had the balls not just balls they truly believe it if, if you can say that to the world you can say this is our defense we just think women are less worthy than men like that was their actual defense you can, um but in you fairness, can see... I guess, to society, the, the head of the U.S. Soccer Federation did actually resign after that came out. Oh, I'm sure out he was and, forced and, to resign. And, yeah, but I'm saying, so there, that wasn't just accepted. That was like, everybody was like, what? No, it wasn't. It wasn't accepted <laughs> once they made a stink about it. I mean, they got the whole world, all these young girls, all, you know, to like rage about like, but you can see how we've gotten here, right? By listening right. to this story. So I think this is a really good way to start this whole argument and we'll look at it from all sides this week, but to really think that, wow, like to see the massive despair and, and to understand that, you know, I wanted to say this is like, when you read all those numbers, my question regarding this documentary and, and why it wasn't solved is like, why is the Federation even fighting it? Like they're literally fighting it, showing it's, these statistics, which are ridiculous, but settle or work. To, like, wouldn't you want to support your women who are winning everything and say like, yeah, we're sorry. You took this deal. Let's make, let's make a, let's make a deal so that next time our contracts are more even, but this is a deal that you took, right? So they're not I even have, doing that. They're just fighting it saying like, no, this is, this is a pay. I have one final statistic that I think will put a bow on this whole thing and just make it make sense for everybody. So do you know that the highest viewed soccer game in history belongs to the U.S. women's team? I believe it. I believe it. The highest viewed soccer game in history belongs to the women and that's all that i'll say <laughs> that's, that's all, all we that gotta I'll say about that that's that's it <laughs> all right. let's let's continue this on the next episode we'll see you guys next time all right bye-bye